Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. And today we have another video about live production and specifically today we're going to talk about Tally. Tally is the ability to send the status of your switcher to your cameras so that camera operators can know whether their camera is in preview or their camera's live. Or no Tally light at all means their camera is neither preview or live, so you can probably take a break. No, you can't. You can't take a break. Um, I've never used Tally before. Uh, most of the productions we've done have been corporate and in fairly quiet environments. So we've just relied on our comms headsets uh, to communicate. Uh, but we have a number of productions coming up that are going to be in much louder areas. And I want to be able to have the camera operators know when their camera is in preview and when their camera is live. So I looked around a bunch of Tally systems. Uh, they range very widely in price. We looked at Scarhoy. Uh, we looked at uh, some of the cheaper options, some DIY options that you can make uh, with Raspberry Pis. And um, I've got to tell you, we've been really impressed with our Hollyland um, SolidCom headsets that we've been using. We have uh, the base station and uh, both uh, dual ear and single ear headsets, and they've been great. They could be a little bit louder, especially in those loud environments, but they've been great. So when Hollyland announced that they had a tally system, I was really interested. And initially I thought, oh, maybe they're gonna integrate that into the base station of the comms unit, but they don't. And I could see why it's a completely separate system. So uh, it's quite reasonably priced for what you get. There's a four light and an eight light option. And I went for the four light option. Uh, we rarely have more than four operated cameras on our productions. The other thing Tally is really useful for is if you're doing things like uh, video podcasts and you want the people in the podcast to know what camera is live on them at that moment, if they want to turn and address a camera. Um, and I think that kind of goes back to the broadcast news days when Tally was on the cameras and news hosts could look right at the camera that was live. So uh, that being said, uh, we did get the Hollyland. This is the Hollyland. Hollyland wireless tally system. And uh, this is the four light unit. I haven't opened the box yet. So why don't we, uh, don't wanna do a full unboxing video or that's not the point of this video. I'm gonna take it out of the box and we're gonna connect it up. Uh, we have a bunch of different um, Blackmagic ATEMs we use. This is apparently quite plug and play with the Blackmagic ATEM. So we're gonna see about that. Um, today I'm just gonna use our little ATEM, uh, four channel SDI ATEM and uh, get it going. So let's let's get this thing open. Ah. Terrible at unboxing this. Ugh. I put this knife away before I hurt myself. Ugh. Some foam. Oh, wait a sec. This comes. This comes in a nice little case. I'm not su not too surprised about that because our um, wireless comm system also came in a nice case. This one's a little bit smaller, so let's crack her open and see what we've got. Oh, there's little. Uh, Oh, handy, there's locks. Unlike our comp system, there's little locks on the case. Uh, so get in here. Open that up. So we've got our four tally lights and our base unit. These are some numbers for the tally lights, so you know which one's which, and uh, the base unit. So let's pull this out. Couple antennas. Let's bring out our tally lights. Uh, they probably need to be charged up. Hopefully, they have a little bit of charge in them. Well, they're already numbered, which is nice. What else do you get here? No overhead camera today, so uh, you get a four bay battery charger uh, with batteries in it. This is also the same, looks like the same batteries and the same charger that you get with the uh, headset unit. So hopefully these are interchangeable and we can just use the same batteries in both. USB cable, 
power adapter. Now I did notice when I was looking at this that uh, unlike the uh, headsets, the base station of the headsets can be powered with um, a V-mount battery. And we have the V-mount option and that comes in super handy for us for a number of reasons. It just makes it a lot more portable. You can kind of put it wherever you need to put the base unit to get the best reception. Um, and you've got a V-mount battery that you can use to charge other things like the headsets if you want. So I think I got mostly everything out of here. We've got power adapter, uh, four lights, antennas, USB batteries. And of course we've got the, the base unit here. So let's just move this charging case out of the way. Not gonna throw it. I know I throw the other stuff, I'm not throwing this. So let's talk about this base unit for a second. Metal. Uh, this is very, very sturdy. I'm actually quite surprised. Um, this seems to be a more durable metal than the um, the hub is for the headsets, although it's also pretty beefy. Uh, on the back here, you've got your antenna ports. Um, you've got your DC input. Uh, you've got your tally in, so this would presumably be connected to your network and your network connected to whatever kind of switch you're using. In our case, we're using an ATEM. So hopefully when I pop this on the network, it'll be easy to configure it to see our ATEM. Loop out control. And I haven't actually read any manuals, but I assume this is so if you want to loop multiple tally units together that you can. Um, some larger DB something connector. It says tally as well. So uh, I guess if your switcher uses this type of configuration, um, you can connect it via that. USB-C. Hmm. I expect that's for charging. No. Uh, yeah, I don't know what that's for. Probably for charging tally lights, updating firmware, that sort of thing. Uh, again, I really should should read the manual and uh, yeah, another antenna port. So on the front of the unit, uh, a USB socket, some controls here and an on off button. Uh, again, there's no no facility for power at the top. This is uh, only DC, but I assume it's DC 12 volt. And if you wanted to run a V-mount battery in here, you could just use a barrel connector uh, and yeah, we'll, we'll take a look at that. We'll test that and see if that's how it works. I don't know if I want to put you through all the craziness of making sure to getting the batteries and stuff out. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get this to the point where it's set up enough that I can come back and you can see what's going on, but you don't have to go through all the putting the batteries in the units and charging them up and um, I will uh, come back as soon as I get ready to put this on the network and we can take a look at how it's configured. So I'll be right back. Hey, welcome back. I have had the opportunity to kind of read the instruction manual, at least this little quick start guide that they give you, which tells you almost nothing, um, but it does show you how to put the batteries in. So um, let's grab one of these here just to confirm I was able to use the um, the batteries that came with our headsets. The uh, batteries that came with the unit were completely dead. I have to charge those up. So I just popped in the batteries from, uh, from our headsets. Uh, they go into the back of the unit. This little door springs springs open and you when you close it, you actually have to pull the latch back across to lock it. And then you hold down, there's a button here, you hold it down for three seconds turn it on and then you get a series of uh, lights over here that indicate the battery status. There is a charging port and a port here that you can use to uh, upgrade the firmware. And then there's a rotate uh, rotating dial here that you use to select what, um, what channel you want this to respond to. So right now this unit is set to four, so it's going to respond as four. So we'll just power on the rest of these units. And as you can see, 
they are all flashing green. That's because the base unit is not on yet. And power on the last one. Now I was gonna use the uh, provided AC adapter, but I wanted to see if you can run it off of E-mount battery. So I put a V-mount battery down and just a P-tap to barrel connection and we'll power it up. So configuring the unit was a little bit weird. Uh, when I went into the menus uh, to set this up, there's two IP addresses you set up. One is the IP address of the unit on your network and the second IP address is for Tally, and that is what is the IP address of the system that's sending Tally, which is your switcher. Um, now, when I th there was no DHCP uh, for the unit itself, which I found kind of odd. I, mean, I my A10 also doesn't have uh, DHCP; it's an older 8K constellation. Um, so I'm used to using a static IP address, but I thought that was a little bit weird for something that's brand new. Um, so I configured the I, an IP address that I knew was available. It's off our reserve list for other units. The um, Then I went and configured the IP address for this ATEM. And uh, when I switched the gateway, uh, I mistakenly didn't switch change the gateway address. So I set it with the wrong gateway address. So I went in, reset it, put it to the right ga gateway address. And when I went back to look at the IP address of the unit itself, the gateway address had changed from what I had previously set up to the one that was in error. So I, I think what's happening is that when you change the gateway, it changes it to both units so that the gateway is the same, which I guess makes sense, but it was a little bit confusing that it changed um, when, I, when I didn't want it to change. Um, but anyway, that's pretty much it. Once you have the IP address of your ATEM in and you have your units powered on, uh, and on the ATEM you can see that one right now is in program, number two is in preview, and if I switch number three to preview, you can see it changes here. And if I do an automatic transition, you can see that it'll switch back and forth. Um, I can also go to two uh, and do a cut. You can see it changes it pretty instantly on cuts. Um, so it, it seems to work. It just seems to do what it's supposed to do. No real must, no fuss. I have not upgraded the firmware in this yet. It's the original firmware that it came with. Uh, I will post in the description below if the firmware enhances any of the features in here, like providing DHCP for the actual unit itself. Uh, and unlike the, uh, the C1 Pro Hub, uh, there is no web UI for this. So there's nothing really that you can do with a browser to configure this. And I'll see if that changes as well with a firmware update. Although there isn't a heck of a lot, honestly, to change. Uh, another interesting thing about these units, um, the dial that's here on the side tells the unit what channel it's on. So if I wanted to have multiple units respond to channel one, I could do that. So Number four is currently set to one and number one is set to one. So if I bring one into preview, they both light up. And I could, I could actually see that being handy in certain situations when you wanna have multiple tallies for that, for that camera. Maybe one that's directly in front of the operator and another one that's in front of you know, a producer or a director, that kind of thing. So that's, that's pretty handy. Anyway, that's pretty much it. It kind of does what it's supposed to do and it's just pretty easy to set up. Uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more gear videos like this, uh, audio, switching, live production stuff, consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.